Hi guys, Spectre here and welcome back to some more Total War Warhammer 3 Continuing my Master Mundi campaign I just found the Kong Lion of Pain over here that's the Dark Elves and Evil Forces So as I said, I thought her power bar was a bit inflated Because every Admiral that's basically got an army is classed as an army even though they can't go on land So you've got two 420 stacks and a 12 stack there You've got one more over here that's a 7 stack You've got another 20 stack there. And you've got another one there that's three. So the bulk of the armies that Marathi's got aren't armies. The admirals, they're on black arcs, which means they're stuck in the ocean. Now, they, as I said, they could attack coastal settlements. They haven't been doing. So I'm guessing they're not for whatever reason. So she's got two armies here. Basically moving towards me. So that's all she's got. But these admirals can't defend territories inland. Like, if I take this, they can't take that back with an admiral. They're going to need to recruit an army. So, that's definitely where the bulk of their power lies. It's in the admirals. So, it's a bit overinflated. Well, I would say... When you've got your first army, you then want your first admiral. You then might want a second admiral before you get a second army. Or you do it the other way around and you get a second army and then a second admiral. Once you've got two admirals and the buildings are built up inside the, uh, the Black Arcs themselves, you probably don't need a third admiral immediately or for a while. You then want to look more recruiting an extra army or two. And then your admirals can support these armies as they move down the shoreline. With their bombardments. You're not looking to have too many admirals. Because they still have upkeep. It's just reduced. But. It's also the limitations of the admirals. Because they can only attack coastal provinces. And armies that are either in those provinces. Or sorry say those settlements. Um, or armies that are in the ocean itself. That they can get to. If it's not in the ocean or in a coastal town or city. The admirals can't get to it. So it's, it's their utility. The admirals are reduced by what they are. Which is why you want some of them, but not loads like she's got. She's got far too many. Where's she gone? Or did she go back? She's gone back. Fucking all these admirals. It looks like she's recruiting there up to essentially about four armies. Looks like that's her limit that she's able to afford. Unless she's got armies elsewhere.
Right, so in typical AI fashion, she's building up that army. And I'm guessing she's going to recruit some stuff into that one. We've got a trespasser. All right, proceed. And you don't want to be trespassing, dude. Fucking how many fleets? Fucking admirals? Jesus Christ. to these armies cost 4139 and almost five grand on that one right okay how is Mundy's army dearer They're 177. Money's got them at 153. They're 248. But they're 165. Why have you got them at 165? It's got the 10% there. Surely he has this though as well. He does, he's got that. Alright, so it's not an Anslavi then. So why have you got them so fucking cheap, dude? See, that's for Soros Infantry and Temple Guard, and his Temple Guard are still dearer than Mazda Mundi's. He gets 5% more there off Temple Guard as well as Saurus and Cold One units. It's only 5% though. He hasn't got it yet. That's why. That's why. Because I still need one more point for the slam force field. So that's going to be what, 37, got 38, 39. So if I go 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. Forty-eight, forty-nine. We've then got one point spare, which I potentially could stick it in there and just give it so the um, Croxy goes. I've got that bit extra, even though it only affects one unit. Yeah, we don't really need that. Forty-eight, So it might be because he's got his blue tree and he hasn't got the blue tree yet, maybe. But when it comes to your spellcasters, it's always more important to get the spells sorted and then their, in this case, his yellow tree parts that makes him more durable and an even better spellcaster and able to get more wins of magic. Um... And then you look, obviously, buffing your army. 
the blue tree does come last. It's just where you've got to be careful with um, spore casters like your vampire counts, some of your chaos social lords, because they might also have a melee tree as well as a spore casting tree. And you can't level both. So if you want to level both melee and spell casting, you've got to get rid of either the red tree or the blue tree. Because you can't do both. Now I would always say you want to buff your army. Your army always wants to be buffed. So red tree is a must. So then you'd let go of your blue tree. And then your army would be slightly more expensive. You might have less campaign movement range. Things like that. But the important thing is then your army is getting those important buffs above rank 7. Because they're big, they're big fundamental buffs on your armies. You don't want to be without. Do you recruit a fifth army? Yeah. She's got him to 17 and stopped recruiting. He's at 19. She's at 18. She's then got this guy now. And then he, that one's just started recruiting. What the fuck? Please coming over here to take her shit. Okay. I was taking that one anyway. So I wouldn't have the complete province. If he's going to take all of this, then fine. I'd rather him have it than her. Otherwise, she might start recruiting armies behind me. Oh yeah, we got rid of that one, didn't we, I think. Which would bring us in some more money, but... Hang on, why have we got this? Don't believe it, fuck it. No, they took a long time on the uh, on Malakif.
and she's bringing three armies at us. He's taking all this shit from me. That's fine. It doesn't mean. As long as she ain't got it, I don't mind. I can't recruit a um, a third army anyway. I need like probably. I'd assume about six thousand coming in, because the army to keep it probably take about five. And bear in mind we have got supply lines, so another army is going to increase it. So I need like six, seven thousand coming in to afford that third army. And I, I can afford one temporarily if I need to, obviously. You know, I've got plenty of treasury. But I don't want to be in the red all the time. That's not how Lizardmen function. They don't work like um, Norskins and Greenskins. She's recruiting another army at the back. Okay. So it looks like she actually can recruit a lot more armies. She just hasn't been doing all they've been getting destroyed elsewhere. It's one of the reasons I'm skeptical about destroying her black arcs. So all destroying black arcs can beneficially get rid of anything bombardment based coming at you. And he gets rid of a mobile recruiting station for her. But she's not using them to recruit anyway. She's recruiting from the cities. Because to recruit from a black arc, you've got to be inside its circle of influence.
11 because she's got a 10 stack there. That one's recruiting. She's got an 11 stack here. So what she could have done instead is made basically another 20 stack. Well, these armies are shit, I'm not worried about these armies, I'll auto-resolve both of those. No. See, these here, for example, they're not using them as the intended. This town here is a port town. They could attack that. For whatever reason, they're not attacking the admirals. Maybe that's just how they're programmed on the AI side. If they're not attacking, it's one less thing I've got to deal with. Otherwise, they could have taken all three of these. That's coming down here. Uh, 11 strong. I don't think that takes my city. And even if somehow it's gifted the auto resolve when I'll just fight that and beat the army. Yeah, he's not, he's not beating that, not with that. And that's a city with city towers and stuff as well. Oh, we didn't take that. All right, okay, it's kind of weird. Enjoyed taking some attrition, assholes. I need to save one of these on different thing. See, it would be a lot easier for me if her territory was at least orange. Because then I could attack it and occupy it. And then I'd have, I'd have more reason to push in. But with it being red, I've just got to destroy it. Apart from not paying you eight grand or seven grand, you have military access, dude. Free benefits us both, and I'm not walking across your territory, which is all the fucking way over there. If he takes both of those, 
and that's the stuff behind we've dealt with. about how the fuck did she take that back she has an army down here oh fuck's sake she has recruited something he's been too slow on the uptake that dickhead I don't want to move an army yet cause if she force marches she's there she can attack in two turns and it's going to take me a fuckload longer to get down here but she has got an army there. And it's a, at least an 18 stink stack. She's got most presence of 9 and she's got 2 settlements. So she's got about 18, 19 units. Which means you can also take that back if she wants. Fuck. Where is Gorok? Gorok, will you get up here already? Take some of this shit? If he takes it, he'll definitely keep it. Can I get anything with this dude? That's, that's essentially Nakai. So Nakai should walk around at least raiding me and stuff. She's got an army in the south again somewhere. So she'll have recruited that down there. And this is what I didn't want because then she can have an army nitpicking at my towns. My cities will be safe enough once they've got the garrison building and stuff. But she can take the smaller towns down there. Man, looks like she's gone back home. Absolutely not. A fat goddamn vampire wraith? I don't think so. She's strength rank 13, she's a bit stronger than me. She's got offensive ally in Nagarond. She's at war with... What's her fucking name? And then me. She's moved back there again with her armies. That other armies moved to there. Wow, oh, we can move far. Right, 
I can at least get down there and take that because she is going to be about three turns away so we can at least get to there if she does move back we've got a beeline it straight back I can't take this at the moment though I don't think She's now got a military presence of 20? And about what? How? She has a military presence of 9 to military presence of 20. And 20 double means 40. So she's suddenly got two 20 stacks down here. Are they coming through the fucking water? I think about. I need another scout here. None of these are good for scouting, in all honesty. They need to come down here quickly and tell them what's going off. Something ain't right. So there's something going off here. It's not weird and she's going up on our borders. Because there's going to either be a big fight at Fallen Gates. Which we can do because that's over half her army. Once that's upgraded I think we get a few more on it as well. Or there's going to be a big fight at Hexwattle here. Obviously Hexwattle's garrison can account for a third army. So both of mine around it. We can try and do that if it comes down to it. But. If they attack that and besiege that, it means that my two armies against three or four of theirs. Which again, potentially we can still win, but the odds are then against us. But if we've got three armies against three of theirs, or three armies against four of theirs, that's a lot better. And I can use the garrison as a throwaway troops, so I don't really care what happens to the garrison. Right, okay, I'm going to leave this part here. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, leave a like. If you're new around here, please drop a subscribe. Um, on the top of the description, there will be the playlist linked to the entire series. I'll catch you guys all in the next video. Take care, everyone, and have a great day.